This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc, it's Q Health, the medical testing company that started out testing for swine flu years and years ago and now has an amazing library of partners as they test for COVID every day. Millions of tests and a billion dollar valuation. This week. Q Health. Q Health was an idea back in 2009 that became a company around 2010 in San Diego, California, under the palm trees and the, and the beach and the waves. There were two guys involved, these men, Ayub Katak and Clint Seaver. They got together with a vision way back here to develop some sort of a test or an indicator for people because they were worried about swine flu. Remember how we go through all these chapters that we got bird flu, swine flu, H1N1, and all the things that we're worried about that could create a pandemic. Then we get COVID-19 that really created a pandemic way back here in 2020. But back then they were thinking about testing kits and things that would help people know early and fast and at home if you had swine flu or not. Well, along the way, it was kind of a slow start. And during this chapter, they really, and you can see the blue line here, it was a research company living on some early grants. As a matter of fact, there was a press release way back here. They got a million dollars from an angel investor to basically get going. So that's pretty good seed money. If you get somebody instead of 100,000, gives you a million. But anyway, that's the story. And they were a research company over for the first several years until they reached 2014. In November 2014, they get seven and a half million dollars in Series A financing. Now, remember, that would still be six years before, you know, five and a half years before it was the end of 2019. Remember, where we first learned how to pronounce the word Wuhan, a city over there and found out about all the things in the wet market and the, 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 the Defense Research Institute or whatever they had over there that was working on it in China. So it would still be seven years. So they were still running on grants and VC money. In the middle of this, they got some very, very significant grants, which showed that their testing technology and what they were doing, they were onto something. Nonetheless, they continued down here. Series B wouldn't be until three years later. In May of 2017, they raised 15.5 million. Now remember, Series Bs that are four years apart, typically are like 4X, like a 10 million A and a 40 million B, because you have product validation and market validation and early consumers, which is basically what validated that early business customer. And so you have what we call traction and momentum. Here, they basically doubled their Series A, but something happened there in one year from May to June of 17 to 18, where the 15.5 was 3X, 45.5. Somebody became a true believer. Now remember, I'm not listing the grants, I'm listing the PE money. Um, or, or VC money, however you want to look at that, because there's a PE round coming up here. It's very significant. Well, it all changes. <clears throat> they get to the end of 2019, and their focus is completely on the COVID test. They get a hundred million dollar round June of 2020. So now remember, June of 2020, we've got trouble around the world. The pandemic is on. And they raise about 100. Some things happen there also. They're not just raising money. Somewhere inside Q Health, they went out to find customers and applications, and this is where they got a lot of their momentum. Not only because they had a really great test, but also with their customers. Watch what happens. The FDA gives them an emergency approval for their test kit in June. One month later in, in July, the NBA is down at Disney World with what was called the bubble. Remember that in 2020, the Lakers would ultimately win the championship and the NBA was playing in what they called the bubble down in Orlando, Florida. And every now and then players would sneak out of the bubble to see friends and family or go party. I'm sure you remember all that. Well, the NBA became a massive and initial customer that's huge validation for Q Health. Then, just a couple months later, the Department of Defense becomes a customer as well. So now you've got some very big customers that are validating what you're doing, and you're leveraging them. Think about all the um, sponsors and people that the NBA has, and the, and the number of owners and all the businesses they have. There was a lot of propagation of the success of the NBA in terms of referrals and market presence. In April, Google signs a deal to use it for its employees. And remember, as of right now, which is uh, third quarter of 2021 as we film this, Google says they're not going back to the office till sometime in 2022. Now, they may announce that differently, but as I stand here right now, it doesn't look like Google's going to say, you will be back in the office, we will have live meetings until 22. So Google is using the test kits. And 
In the prospectus for the IPO, because we're going to get to that in a minute, Google indicated that they're also working on an advanced respiratory detection system. So the big brains at Google are working with the brains at Q, and now you've got things coming together. Well, <clears throat> all of this is going on, and in April there's Google and then a PE round in May. This is not a coincidence. In the month of May, they announced that they have private equity coming in for $235 million. Now, if you add all this up, I read an article that said that they've raised almost $1.2, $1.3 billion. I don't quite add that up, but if there's grants in the background that are adding up to that, okay, I cop to that. But this is what I found in terms of traditional VCPE investment. Then they announced the IPO. Well, the IPO just happened a little bit ago, as in three days ago, where, as we filmed this, and it went out at 16, finished the day at 20, 25% up day one for a $3 billion market cap. So you go from right here in 2019, basically going into 2019, having raised $45 million, all the way up to a $3 billion market cap. You're sitting here in 2021 on the momentum of the COVID-19 pandemic. And there is only one word for that, and that is, damn, you went from a research company to COVID pushing you into the market to big customers like Google and the NBA. And suddenly you go from here to a $3 billion market cap, 25% up on day one. That is pretty amazing. Let's look at revenue. In the first half of 2021, they have $201 million in revenue and they make a little bit of a profit. Uh, I believe it was in the perspectives that they only made about $15 million in 2020. And I think they lost three times that in terms of loss, like $40 million or something that and lost. So you can see what COVID did to them and away they go. So they're tracking this year, if they just double it to have, you know, $400 million, give or take, probably a little more than that, with on the strength of all these customers they've got to. So now let's step back a minute and take a look because you have a research company on the strength of COVID that just drives you into the future. Is this a one hit wonder? I personally hope not because I like the story. But if I take a look here, Lucera and Biodesix, both who went out with COVID tests, both who went public, Biodesix is right now down 50%. Lucera is trading only 50% of its IPO value. So some real happy people that invested in that company. So I'm curious here, is this, could this be a storm cloud coming over the stock chart for Q Health? Well, I hope there's not storm clouds because I do like the team and what's going on with Q Health. But let's take a look at what's different. Q Health had commercial success as well as medical success. The emergency FDA approval that happened in June, right before the MBA, was huge for them. By the way, they've also been working with the Mayo Clinic and they've had important validation coming out of research and tests out of the Mayo Clinic. And you want to talk about validation, the Mayo Clinic is one of the premier healthcare organizations and research hospitals in the United States. So here they get commercial success and they also got medical success. I don't know where Lucera and Biodesix are, but I see this here. But the question for me is in the lessons. In the lessons. First of all, sometimes opportunity knocks and it's a perfect storm. You had them working on swine flu way back here, getting grants, some big validation, even before COVID hit, and then COVID happening and them being at the right place at the right time. Right here is a quote that is often attributed to Roger Penske, who's an amazing entrepreneur here in the United States and also one of the most successful racing owners in history, having won the Indy 500 an amazing number of times by the teams that he owns. He says, luck is where opportunity meets preparation. You can't call me lucky. Either I'm able to take advantage of something that happens in front of me or I'm not. So luck is where opportunity meets preparation. I was prepared, I was doing business, whatever it is I was doing, a situation came along, I could jump on it. That's not luck. So I believe in that as well. And so this is not luck. Luck is where opportunity meets preparation. The opportunity of a tragic, horrible global pandemic and a company that started with a vision for swine flu test kits with grants and everything has their product ready, gets an FDA approval, and then commercial customers come behind it. I think that's tremendous. The real question I have is now what? 
There's going to be a life cycle for COVID. There's going to be other people with COVID tests. Take a look at pregnancy tests. You can go to the dollar store and get them for a dollar each. Testing has a way of just smoothing itself out and going down in low cost, especially because we want people of average means to have access to those tests. So there's a lot of market and governmental pressure to make them very inexpensive. And that's a great society benefit for people can get an inexpensive test and know whether they're sick or not and not infect other people. But the question question is, what does Q Health do after COVID? They're on a roll right now. I'm sure they're thinking about that. They got smart people around them. But as we can see, if you don't get it right, you can end up languishing on the stock market at 50% of your IPO price. Well, I hope that doesn't happen to Q Health. I love this case study. I think it's a story of having a vision and somehow being able to stay in the game and then suddenly opportunity meets preparation, and it wasn't luck for Q Health, as they have a $3 billion market cap and a very successful IPO. Well, that's what I think about Q Health, but what do you think? There's a lot of room for opinion, and I want to hear yours. I answer as many as I can in the comments. Also, please subscribe to Valuetainment, Valuetainment Economics, the best channels on the internet for entrepreneurial content, for people that have started companies, or people just like you, startup CEOs and people working for startups or with a dream to build one. I'll answer all those comments, and if you subscribe and hit the bell, you'll get notifications when more great content's coming up. If you like this one on Q Health, check Check out this one from the BizDoc archive. I think you'll like that too. Until next time, I'm Tom Mills with the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.